Have you shifted left yet? Well, you probably should. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 593 of this here electronic engineering podcast called Amelia's Weekly Fish Fry, brought to you by eejournal.com and written, produced, and hosted by yours truly, Amelia Dalton. My guests this week are Jane Judge and Dieter Thurston from Sakasi. Jane, Dieter, and I discuss trends in front-end chip design, why the shift-left methodology is a game-changer for chip designers, and how Sagasi is redefining hardware description language, creation, and validation. So without further ado, please welcome Jane and Dieter to Fish Fry. Hi, Jane. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Amelia. Really nice to be here. Excellent. And hi, Dieter. Thank you for joining me. Hi, Amelia. So glad to be here. Thank you for the time with us. Awesome. Okay. So we're talking about Sagasi today. So first off, Jane, introduce my listeners to Sagasi. What are you guys all about? What are we all about? Well, first and foremost, we are a company searching to redefine hardware description language creation, integration, and validation. So we're talking about chip design. We're all about helping designers, users, verification engineers make their HDL-based design flow as efficient as possible. So catching as many errors as they can. We're based in Belgium, so we also have a real taste for life and for just having a good time which means that we want our users to have a good time. We want our users to be able to do things easily. And that's what we do by shifting left the concept of HDL design. Fantastic. Now, where does the name Sagasi come from? It's a little bit of a secret sauce, but we've got a couple of theories that we are allowed to share. Let me put it that way. Um, First and foremost, so it's S-I-G-A-S-I, which of course could be silicon, gallium, and silicon. Of course, the building blocks of our industry One other fun part, though, is uh, that while we've been here at DAC, we've had some Greek friends visit us, and they've let us know that sigaze in Greek apparently means silence. And this works for us because we silence all the warnings and problems that are in HDL specifications before they have to go to the next team. So we actually kind of like the fact that sigasi means silence in Greek. I love that. Okay, so you guys took time out from this year's design automation conference for our discussion today. So what's your impressions of this year's deck? First off, I think it's uh, bouncing back a bit from uh, where it was at during and after the COVID years. So many participants, and we also experienced that uh, it's growing a bit compared to the previous years, but still It's far away from the bustling event that it was, say, 10 to 20 years ago. And that's a bit of a worrying element. It's probably to a large extent due to the fact that the whole electronics design automation industry has consolidated over the years since uh, the inception of, let's say, semiconductors. There's only three major players left, uh, really. And even this year, or was it last year, we saw this big acquisition by synopsis of ANSYS. So it's still consolidating. And in all fairness, that doesn't do right to this industry. That's my personal opinion, because the whole digital society that we all live in these days, the cornerstone of that is chips. And these chips are designed with electronics design automation tools. And hence, it's an extremely important industry that affects lives of many people uh, across the globe. And in that sense, I'd hope that would actually become bigger again in the future. There is perhaps light on the horizon in the sense that with artificial intelligence solutions coming to fruition beyond the hype, perhaps this can change things around a little bit with startups popping up and uh, yeah, recreating a bit of energy, a bit of bustling in this electronics design automation space. So what trends are you seeing, particularly in the front end chip design space? Do any surprise you? No real surprises, to be honest, but let me explain a bit about the trends that we see. As Jane has already mentioned, not only Sigasi, but the whole industry now is about shift left. That means you have to look at design in semiconductors like a flow from left to right, where the ideas are on the left side and all the steps that you have to go through towards the implementation flow from left to right. 
Hence, shift left actually stands for taking as much concerns as you possibly can, concerns, trade-offs from the later stages in the design into account as early as possible. And that's one of the things where we see evolution because complex designs as we know them today would never have been possible without implementing abstraction, meaning when you go from the left to the right, there's an abstraction in between the steps and there's intermediate steps. And these intermediate steps mean that you take a blind eye on some of the concerns of the implementation going down to the right. Otherwise, without that abstraction, we would never have been able to handle the complexities that we are implementing today. However, as the whole semiconductor industry is working hard to extend Moore's law and very complex physics elements come into play when you do that, essentially we need to factor these concerns back into the equation, which means we have to sort of break the ease of abstraction that we had and take more parameters of the later design stages into account as early as possible. So that's definitely an evolution that we see, and we see many parties working on that, as Jane already explained. So is Sigasi. That's one element. That's one thing that we see in the front end of chip design. Another thing is, and it's actually complementary or even, uh, yeah, it's even similar to what I just said in the sense that we also see additional standards emerging to describe the hardware description level that Sigasi is operating on. Standards like UPF that deal with how can I specify the power behavior of my chip, something that was left out when hardware description languages were defined in the first place, but now needs to be put back in the equation. Another one is the up and coming clock domain check standard. That's where Accelera is working on and which will probably see a release by the end of this year. So all in all, this is probably the biggest thing we see in front-end chip design is becoming more complex. It has to account for many more parameters down the line in the design flow. So this shift left methodology is definitely a game changer for designers. So how does Sagasi support this methodology? This goes to the heart of our technology, and it is essentially a super fast compiler that we have built, which watches over your shoulder with regards to everything that you do in that hardware design phase. Typically, compilation is only done in a later stage in the design when you want to synthesize your design or whether you want to simulate your design. And that's not what we think is right because having errors transpire in that stage is simply just a waste of time and it takes too many iterations to make all of that happen. So we have this super fast compiler, runs along, with you while you're crafting your code, and it helps to pull all of these checks that you would have had normally later in the line forwards. We make the design insightful. We visualize as much as possible and in many different views to the designer to make sure that everything goes right. So you guys recently announced the availability of the Sagasi Visual HDL portfolio. So tell me more about that. That's right. We're really excited to be able to release this new portfolio. The Siasi Visual HDL, or SVH as we're calling it, is a comprehensive portfolio that has a tiered set of additions. So each edition builds on the last. All of them give designers and users lots of verification, lots of checks and balances on their designs. And the way that we do this is actually by bringing the shift left methodology to these hardware and verification designers, giving them better insight into the design process. And what we do with that is actually we're standardizing the concept of an HDL design project, shifting left the simulation and the synthesis projects into a world of integrated development, synchronous visualization, and then you guessed it, shift left validation. With the integrated development, what we mean by that is that we're fully integrated with Microsoft Visual Studio Code, which we've seen is consistently the most popular IDE among users because of the Stack Overflow survey. So their annual survey, it goes up by a couple of points every year. I think this year it was at about 80% of users prefer VS Code to any other IDE. And we integrate with that perfectly. Next with our synchronous visualization. So Dieter was just talking about how fast our compiler is and that it gives you type time feedback. Well, it also lets you move seamlessly through hierarchy views and graphics that also update instantaneously as you make changes in your code. And then on top of that, our shift left validation, Dieter explained quite a bit, but we start with syntax and semantics and enforce all kinds of coding styles 
again, as you're writing. And with our tiered portfolio, we give users easy, easy access to all of these great features. So we start with our designer edition, which is meant to meet the specific needs of individual engineers who want introspection on their HDL projects. So here we're talking about the really essential guidelines and tools that you need for quality code, right? We're talking about hovers, autocompletes, quick fixes, some formatting, rename, refactoring. On top of that tier, we've got our professional edition. So that builds a bit on that, includes everything from designer, but incorporates more complex features, including those graphic features, block diagrams, state machine views, UVM support, UVM diagrams that I was talking about for the synchronous visualization. And then on top of that, we've got our enterprise edition aimed at large engineering teams, including command line interface capabilities that can really safeguard the entire code repository and ensure a better handoff to your next team. So to the verification, to the simulation side of things as you go through the steps. And then all of these are actually undergirded by a community edition. So this is new for Sigasi. We're really proud of this a fully functional, completely free community edition that users can use, just install it from the VS Code Marketplace, lets you limitlessly explore the powerful features, everything except what's in the enterprise-specific edition, but everything from designer, everything from professional, you can use for free as long as it's non-commercial use. So as long as you're not making a chip with it and you're just evaluating, checking it out, or if you're a student, for example, students and professors, this is a great way to also better learn the fundamentals of HDL design. Because of all the checks that we can give, because of the automation that we provide, it's a really fantastic tool to learn kind of the capabilities and frictionless ways that you can work in HDL. So if professors want to use Sigasi, they can come and talk to us about possibly using the community edition in their classrooms. So these three commercial tiers, designer, professional, and enterprise editions, with then the free community edition next to it is what SVH is all about, really bringing an accessible version of a really, really fantastic HDL platform to our users. Fantastic. Now, how can my audience get more information about Sagasi? Well, of course, uh, we are in the digital world, so it's pretty easy to go to the World Wide Web and check out Sagasi.com, S-I-G-A-S-I.com. We're also on LinkedIn, quite active there. And we have a Twitter feed and we've got our Facebook page too. And we do monitor all of those. We check those. So if anybody wants to get in touch with us, either there or via our website, we're more than happy to talk to folks. Fantastic. All right. So it's time for your off the cuff question. So first off, Jane, this is your first time to San Francisco, I believe. So what stands out to you? It is. And um, Amelia, if you believe it, it's not just my first time in San Francisco. It's my first time on this side of the Mississippi River. Wow. It's been pretty intense. It's fantastic. I love it. I've been having a great time. The sunshine, which is a big change from Belgium, is great. The fact that it's not too hot is also great. I'm just loving soaking up kind of the California vibe. (laughs) I love it. Now, Dieter, what has been your favorite San Francisco experience this year? (laughs) Amelia, can I be allowed to have two answers to that question? Yes. Is that okay? All right, cool. Because there's one professionally, you may have noticed, but we've developed a new branding, a new and more professional way of presenting ourselves, Sigasi, as a company. And on the show, we really had an immensely positive feedback on that from both peers in the industry and, and customers and prospective customers. So that was really a great feeling to have that happening. The other thing was quite obviously more on the personal side. After the the show yesterday, which was the last day that we had the industry exhibition, uh, the team went to uh, Fisherman's Wharf to have a bit of celebration. uh, The exhibition had gone well and we have great contacts uh, from the show. And it was from 1990 that I had been there with my uh, wife. So that's like 34 years ago. And uh, yeah, it brought back sweet memories and it was a beautiful place. It was beautiful food that we have and sharing that experience with the colleagues. That was just fantastic. I love it. That sounds wonderful. Well, guys, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thanks, Amelia, for having us. Thank you, Amelia. Bye. Hey, have you checked out EE Journal on social media yet? Well, you should. You can find us at facebook.com slash EE Journal. If you're into X, you can monitor our tweets at EE Journal TFM. And don't forget, if you would like to follow my personal account, check out Amelia D 1978. And hey, if LinkedIn is more your thing, 
I dig it. You can follow us or me on LinkedIn as well. And we are now on Blue Sky Social and Mastodon too. And we have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash eejournal. Folks, it is chock full of all kinds of techie videos, including our very popular Chalk Talk webcast series and our brand new animated series called Libby's Lab. And of course, you can subscribe to our EE Journal YouTube channel as well. Also, make sure that you subscribe to this here podcast through Spotify, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, or just about any other podcasting platform to listen to some exciting upcoming episodes. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. If you know of any cool new technology or, heck, you just want to chat, shoot me a line at Amelia, that's A-M-E-L-I-A, at eejournal.com or post a comment on our forums on EE Journal. For the week of August 2nd, 2024, I'm Amelia Dalton, and you've been fried. <laughs>